I could stay like this Forever following you Just don't get too far And I'll be right where you are Abby here, Purple Cottage Crafts. Welcome back to another video. So while the family is making a run to Costco, I thought I would take this opportunity to um, film the intro for this next video I'm going to be working on. Now, um, since I'm still in the living room temporarily, uh, I might be limited in actually doing like talking like this, like real, real time. So what I'll probably do is film some more of the sped up process portions. And then when I have an opportunity to um, talk again, then um, I'll come back on and do some of these like in real time and kind of chit chat with all of you. So um, if, if you follow me anywhere, my social media, you know that I, I have become absolutely um, obsessed with the whole slow stitching movement. And I'm really excited to incorporate this type of um, crafting and making into my um, crafting projects and just things of that nature. So I, what I wanted to do for another video under for underneath my um, slow stitch playlist is I'm going to be doing a couple different slow stitch projects using some tea bags. And I had to kind of rebuild my stash since we uh, moved back to Oregon because I didn't think it, I didn't want to. I hadn't emptied out the. Um, the, the tea from the bags that I had. I had like a big bowl of these and instead of packing these across the United States I thought I'll just get rid of those, recycle them and I drink tea almost every day so I just kind of started again. So sorry for the ugly bowl. <laughs> we haven't bought um, dishware yet for the kitchen because we're going to be remodeling the whole kitchen so we're waiting. So for now we're using Costco um, dinnerware. <laughs> so I have some tea bags in here I need to empty out the, um, the grounds from. But here I have some I've already started doing that. And um, I kind of do it in a couple different stages, but I didn't want to take these out because I don't want to get tea all over uh, my table surface here. So I have these tea bags um, I'm going to be using as well. Let me move these off to the side. I'm hoping that the lighting's okay. It's um, like one something in the morning, so um, I have my alt light on. Hopefully it's going to be okay. So the next um, little thing I'm going to be working on is another tea bag tuck spot. And this one's going to be a double one. Um, this is just from a larger iced tea um, bag. And I'm just going to go ahead and fold this in half like that. And then um, what I want to do is do some slow stitching on the front of this and then attach it. And then this could be a, it'll be a tuck spot here. Like this will be one and then behind will be two. And there's also going to be some pockets in here to put some little slips of paper, or tickets, or whatever. So it's going to become like a multifunctional little tea bag thing I'm working on. So these are the materials um, that I kind of gathered that I thought would look really good um, with this um, this particular you know project I'm getting ready to work on. And as far as the um, this is um, the th couple different the thread and oh, I forget what this is called. DMC, DCM, D I think it's DMC. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so I'm going to be using these two colors um, for the project. And what I want to do is cut down some of the fabric. I actually want to tear it so I have that really nice natural kind of um, salvage edge look. And for the backing, this is kind of my thought process. Of course, it can always change. Let me zoom in just a little bit. There we go. All right, so what I want to do is make this fabric the backing to the front um, little slow stitch collage bit that I'm doing. And then I will trim this down, of course, but I want this part here to be in it. Not this long, but like I want this little um, kind of, you know, edge on there. And I want to just kind of, I'm just kind of eyeballing this before I, you know, obviously cut it down or do any stitching yet. So, and then this one will go like this. Make sure I'm on my tea bag, right? Let me put this back over here. Make sure I'm staying the right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that'll work. So it'll be tea bag. And then that. And then this of course cut to size. And then I was thinking, um, just to kind of do like another little layer bit, because I, I love the different layers and textures that you um, when you stack your different materials. So this just these are just some scrap pieces of fabric. This is some um, burlap 
that I had left over from a different project, a scrap. It's got some black stitching in it. I'm, I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, keep that. I'm not going to pull the thread out. I like the contrast, I guess. So I'm just kind of layering, you know, um, some little bits of scraps and stuff. And they kind of have that go there. I was thinking about maybe putting a strip, this little scrap on there, or possibly cut this one down. I haven't decided yet for sure, but um, I'll keep these to the side just in case. And I am going to be working on this um, uh, washcloth that I use for crafting stuff because <clears throat> that's actually one of our pillows, <laughs> pillowcases. And I like to keep that kind of clean if I can, like from threads and whatever, you know. Because <clears throat> I some of the papers I've been working with um, do have ink on them. And because it's kind of my temporary setup for taking pictures and everything. So I kind of want to have a little bit of a clean workspace, which is why you're looking at a dishcloth or a craft. It's a washcloth, but I use it for crafting stuff. There's like ink and stuff on it. So just let you know that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, load up my two different needles I'm going to be using and then kind of get the fabric cut and torn down. I mean, I'm not going to show that because that's not very exciting. And then I'll come back on when I start doing some actual stitching. So I'll see you in just a little bit. this part because um, all my craft stuff is still packed except for like you know just some basic stuff that I was able to dig out my rooms are getting close to being done so my little wire brush that I use to distress fabric and paper and that kind of stuff is still packed but I'm finding that using my tweezers are working just great so I want put it on my hand so you can kind of see it so you see that from that rough edge there and that's from when I tore it I want this to kind of look a little bit more distressed than it does in this bit right here. So I've just been taking my um, tweezers and I fold the fabric in, you know, um, no certain amount of fold, just depends on the size, I guess, um, what I'm looking for. And I just kind of hold it at the tippy top and I just take these and just kind of rub on it like that and it roughs up the edges really nicely. So, and I'll show you this um, right here so you can kind of get it before. On that piece, I'll go this way. Oops. And you can make it, um, you know, just the tension you put on it, or the pressure, I should say, depend um, will depend on how much of a distressed edge that you want to get on your project. Sorry if I'm kind of talking low. Um, my family's upstairs sleeping. It's highly unlikely they can hear me, but I just feel myself wanting to talk quiet. I don't know why. So when I go to edit this video, hopefully it's not too too quiet. So you get that little distressed edge on there. Love that. And this is some leftover um, coffee dyed fabric I use for um, a couple other projects. So I always, when I'm coffee dyeing or doing my different stains, whether it be tea or using, you know, um, eco eco dyeing or things like that, I always like to have um, extra so I can use it on different projects because it's, um, you know, not it's it, it's not a difficult process to. Um, do those things, but um, it's nice to kind of have it in like one big, um, you know, batch, so to speak, since I um, have to, you know, do it in the kitchen and stuff. So, all right, so that paper, or that paper, um, this is all distressed like I like, and then let's we'll kind of form this on here. Now, I'm not going to be directly stitching onto the tea bag this time because I want um, the ability to um, have the use of these pockets right here and then make it in tuck spots. So what I'm gonna do, and this is the reason why I chose this backing fabric, one, because it adds another layer of texture to it, but also it's gonna be much easier for me to adhere this panel when I get it all slow stitched to uh, this. And what I will use for that is just some score tape because that's what I was able to dig out 
of my craft stuff. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to use. You, of course, could use whatever kind of adhesive you want. Um, you're going something that's probably like a fast grab, I'm thinking, I'm guessing. Um, and like, you know, Beacon 3 1 if you want a liquid glue or something. But I'm using score tape for a couple reasons. One, it's my favorite um, dry tape to use. And two, it was easier to get to. And three, because I don't want this, the, um, you know, the glue to seep through this because it is, uh, you know, tea bag material. If you wanted to use wet glue, just cut something to size, like another piece of cardstock or plastic or something, and just stick it inside there. And then when you go to glue this to the front of your tea bag, it won't seep through and close the pocket. So there is that. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of make sure I have these not too perfect because you know it is you know a hand stitched kind of a um, you know handmade item. So I don't want it to be like too perfectly square and stuff. So I'm not gonna worry about these additional pieces yet because I need to start stitching on that. So let's go ahead and get going on that one. Oops, grab the little dishcloth, craft cloth I should call it. Now this is a longer bit on here that's, um, I typically don't do it with this long of, th um, you know, thread or whatever on here, um, especially when it's small like this, but I don't want to have to keep re-threading my needle because I'm going to use this um, for other um, parts of this video too. So I'll just kind of deal with having that longer bit of thread so but if you don't like that you of course can make it to whatever size you want I don't have any rolls pattern with this I think I'm gonna do like some basic um, running stitches and possibly some seed stitching and I'm gonna cover the whole thing so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of start down here in the bottom right and just pull this through and just kind of start going to town. So let me zoom in just a little bit. I won't bore you with um, have you watch me slow stitch this whole thing, so that would probably oops, be really, really boring. I do have the greens that I mentioned kind of in the upper corner over here, so I can kind of look at them and think about whether I want to use those in this little um, um, collage bit right there. So I'm gonna leave those over there, and as I'm working on this, I can just kind of think about it and, and kind of decide if I want to do that or not, so. All right, let's kind of do a little bit of a running stitch motion here and again I'm not trying to be precise meaning I'm not trying to make sure it's all in one even row or not I'm just I'm just having some fun doing some hand stitching um, and some slow stitching so fun for all I'm trying to see what this movie is that's on right let me look real quick I have it muted um it is called oops wrong thing it is called the front page and I have not seen this movie yet um so I'm recording it so I can watch it later uh, tomorrow or, you know, later this week or something. But it is Turner Classics, um, 31 Days of Oscars. So they started in the 1st of February and it ends on March 3rd, I believe it is. Yeah. And they show just all kinds of Oscar, you know, classic movies. Some that are even been made since I've been born. But I've been told that anything like in the 70s or the 80s, like within like, you know, um, 25 years or more, I guess, at that um, it's considered vintage and classic. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I'm not that old, am I? But that's okay. So there's been a lot of great classic movies on. If you're a classic movie fan like me, Turner Classic is amazing. It's like commercial free and all they do is just um, show classic movies. And there are no commercials. Um, their version of commercials are showing like old trailers from movies that are going to be coming up in the next week or so or, you know, old um, radio talks, things that they would show like in the movie theaters and stuff. So it's really, really cool. I love that channel. I'm obsessed. Obsessed. Okay. Let me grab my little needle here. Oopsie. So... And again, you might be cringing like, oh my goodness, look how much thread she has on there. I know, I know, I know. Just trying to, I know. All right, so now I'm just kind of decide do I want to just keep going doo -doo 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 -doo, or go up and down, like, you know, this, 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 and then come kind of work my way in. I think I just want to kind of go back and forth. I don't want to really think about it too much. I just want it to be a really cool stitched piece. And like I was saying, some it's a combination of some seed stitching and then just like, you know, regular size, rice size. I don't know what you call it, but that's what it looks like to me. So again, I hope the lighting's okay. When I go to edit this, I'll get a better idea of how it looks. So I'm going to be adding, in addition to the uh, materials I showed you 
that I had set out for this project. I'm definitely going to be adding some more elements to that. Um, maybe like a little bit of some um, another textile or a bigger piece of like yarn. I'm also going to be um, doing some decoration, not a lot, but on the um, other, you know, the little inserts like for the, um, where it's just going to be like a tuck spot here, here, and the two pockets. So I'm going to put some little bits of coffee paper in here, but I'll, um, you know, do some stitching on the top just to kind of make it look kind of fun. And then I'll be using some different materials and stuff for that. So that's kind of my game plan for this right now. And... I um, have another type of slow stitching that I'm also learning about. I came across it in my um, just you know me watching other you know different types of you know slow stitching, hand stitching videos, and then um, embroidery, learning some different embroidery knots and stuff like that. So I was able to find some of the material that is typically used, or at least when it was original uh, when it came to be. And I'm excited about that. I'm not sure if it's 100% exactly, but they give you some different options. Um, but um, I don't want to share that one until I'm ready to actually do it. So hopefully in the next week or two, I'll be able to carve some time out to do that. Now, I also have some design team projects I need to get crack a on. One, um, used to, I'm on the design team for, it was originally called Artie Cardi Co., um, Terry Ayers is the owner and have a video I believe on my channel um, showing you my design team package I got from her. I'll link it below. And then, um, but it's now called To Bold Boldly Go, like Vincent Van Gogh. I'm really excited about it. She has some amazing mixed media um, products and um, like, you know, doing art journaling and different things like that. And um, she is like buddies with Seth Apter, and that is really, really cool. And um, his big texture that he um, has through Emerald Creek, I almost forgot the name, she um, has those. And when Seth was on Barb Owen's channel, um, oh my goodness, I came to tell you how long ago that was. Um, I remember when I, when I edit this, I will go through and um, include link to Barb Owen, that specific video. And so while he was live answering questions with everybody in the chat and stuff, I went to go look for, I could find some of those big texture that, um, that he has because he um, was demoing them. And I was like, oh, I need to have some of those. So um, Terry's store was the only one I could find online. So I know it's not really too clear. This isn't really, this part isn't really like a tutorial, me just doing the stitching, me assembling it and kind of sharing my idea for it. I guess that's more of the meat of the video. Um, anyway, and she had them, so I ordered some, and um, I didn't get a chance to play with them before we moved, because this all happened within a few weeks of us moving. It was pretty quick, um, so I have them on my mixed media cart, so I'm definitely going to be digging into those, because the carts are, um, you know, the carts are easy to get to. We just put, you know, plastic, like, shrink wrap over them and stuff, so I can get to those, not a problem. I'll be right back. Okay, so imagine my surprise when I looked up at the camera to make sure I was still in frame and it shut off. Oh, I'm sitting here talking to myself when I, as, I, as I was working on some more rows, so I am so sorry about that. So um, just more of the same of what I'm doing. I was just kind of gabbing about classic movies again. So um, something else I forgot to mention, I purposely, when I trimmed this or tore this down, I purposely kind of gave myself a little bit of an overlap because the fabric does you know, cinch up a little bit when you're doing all the stitching, so. And you can see I'm just doing combination again of some of the seed stitching. This looks like rice size to me, like some longer, and then some small, then long again. No real rhyme or reason with this one. I'm just, just having fun doing some stitching. So, um, you know, there's not a, uh, like, you know, a specific length I'm trying to do with each of these stitches, so. All right. Kind of keep going like this. I'm almost done with this part, and then what I will do is um, set this that little um, pull over here so I can show you. Oh, there it is. I can um, put this back on the corner, and I'm going to kind of look at it and see if I want to add any other textures behind this or not. Um, because once I stitch this onto this panel, I can still add other elements, you know, around this or even over top of that if I want to. So just the creative freedom, all the different opportunities and different options you have of doing some slow stitching on this. 
do two more on the side and then we'll flip over. So I think what I might do is put the rest of this on um, process because this cannot be entertaining or fun or any of those things. Um, watch me just kind of do this back and forth, back and forth. And um, I'll probably do the same thing for the little um, collage bit. I'm going to stick down here and then I'll come back on camera when I'm getting ready to stick it to this here and then kind of do some stitching on some of the paper. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, like on this project, which will be in a separate video, I just, you know, did some paper samples and I just um, paper a little bit and just did some stitching on there. So. that all stitched together. Just have it sitting on top of the tea bag so I can um, make sure I like the sizing and everything. So just real super simple stitching there. Nothing fancy wancy. Get definitely going to be adding more to this. So what I want to do next is to stitch on this little collage bundle here and then um, like kind of down here in the bottom corner. I want to go ahead and finish off the rest of this collar of the um, thread that I'm using and I think I might want to add a button. I'm not 100% sure yet but let me kind of dump some out so if I can get some that stand out to me. I get them all out. No these are not vintage buttons these are just from Walmart. I cannot get to my vintage buttons as of yet. So grab these bigger ones and get them out of the way real quick. That's good enough for now. All right, so before I start sewing on, let's see if I want, this is a wood one. Let's see if I like how that looks. Yeah, I think I want to have a little bit more dark on, a little bit more of a grunge, I guess you could say. Let's see how that one looks. Uh, I think I like that one. Let me just check real quick to see if I have a smaller one. And I think I do. Let's see if I like the smaller, if I can get it out of here. I like the smaller one better. Take a peek, see. Just looking up, make sure I'm still recording. It didn't turn off on me like earlier. Okay, let's sideway like I like this side better. All right, so what do you guys think looks better? Smaller size, like that, um, or this size? I wish I had one in between the two. I think I'm gonna go with this one though. That one seems just a little like it gets a little bit lost on that a little collagey bit. All right, so. I'm not going to stitch this on until I get these done because I think I might want to use some of the green that I started up earlier and I'm going to kind of go back over and add some more green and, or not add some more green but actually add the green. There Abby. There you go. So again just going from the back side and just doing some really fun kind of you know just super simple random stitching. I have been practicing um, some different embroidery florals and different types of knots and stuff like that. So um, once I feel a little bit more confident about do, use, uh, making those, then I will definitely start incorporating them into my different projects. So that is coming. I just want to have a little bit more, I guess, um, a little more practice on that. So let's see, it's going to go on kind of like that. All right, let's go ahead and kind of start coming back this direction. I know I'm not zoomed in very close, so I'll try to, let me hold it up see if that works, if I need to zoom in. So I'm just doing the same thing again, just going back and forth, back and forth, and just kind of pulling through. Oops, I also like it when I just have like half the length of the stitch compared to the prior one. Just kind of adds a little bit more visual texture to that. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop there. I'll pull this through and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Get that snug in there. It's so like this one here. 
this went all the way from well it's kind of in that little roll of fabric for, but from here to over here and this one I just did it to just like right about there so I just think it kind of looks kind of fun something a little bit different and let's see do I want to go back over let's go on from this piece of fabric to the burlap little bit here I'm n I never know on oops on videos sorry about that videos and projects like this how close you want to see me just doing this stitching like this I mean when I start doing more of the you know knots and different um, floral stitches and stuff and I definitely will you know have a better um, camera angle for that for sure but for this one I'm just kind of you know just doing some basic basic stuff right now I think that might be all I want to put in there let me kind of pull this out a little bit I want it to be kind of cinched up and not too super snug okay let's see how that looks make sure I'm back in frame kind of in the corner like that and I like that it's kind of bunched up a little bit so I think that's good for there I'm going to tie this off actually do I want to use hmm. maybe I'll just go ahead and use the same and then just have this accent of the green is that what I want to do I think that might be what I want to do yep yeah, we'll do that instead we'll just finish this off okay so let me get to back over to where I want the button to go so it's a bit um, go back down here down the back side then I can pull this through and I just want to make sure I like that side the best yeah I like that one okay so I'm just going to hold this up get the tea bag out of the way I'm just going to kind of hold this in a precarious manner right now and then I'm just going to come up through the bottom do the buttonhole hopefully there it is there is that and I'll tie this off on the back in a minute but that's pretty much how it's gonna look except for me going back through and adding um, some bits of the green and I'll be back once I get um, this part done and then we'll tape this on together and then I will show myself um, show you all by filming myself there you go Abby how I'm just gonna be doing some simple stitching on top of some coffee dyed paper scraps so I'll see you in just a little bit So I don't know how long this little clip's going to be. The um, contractor's here and they're working on my room some more. So there's some background noise. So I just wanted to pop on here real quick. So I want to really get this finished so I can get the video edited and uploaded for all of you. So um, I'm not sure I left off in the last clip or not. But I did get the stitching done on the side. And I'm going to push this off uh, out to the side a little bit so you can see them. And then I'll show what they look like. They're all different sizes and stuff. Not planned that way, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm still learning. Just practice, practice, practice. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this to the front of the tea bag. I already have some score tape on the back. And then um, I'm going to be kind of grabbing into these little um, 
I have some coffee dyed book pages and these are just some different little coffee dyed paper scraps that I've been using since uh, uh, my temporary setup. So I have um, some really like some um, vintage mu music sheets in here I could use if I wanted to. Um, some different die cut edges from you know from other projects I've been working on and um, I probably will just use some of the where to go here it is sorry for my reach oh to stop my thing um in vintage photo the distress ink to kind of eat up the pages a little bit forgot I dropped my little dauber sorry guys oh there we go and then for adhesive when I'm putting the um uh papers and making the little um you know little tags and whatnot i'll probably just be using my uh, most favorite of all time glue stick this stuff works amazing it's permanent and i love it i use it on all different types of mediums and stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and get myself a little more set up and i will just turn the camera on we'll make it a process video and it's daylight still so i'm hoping that the light lighting now is better than it was last night so i will see you in just a little bit for the day is completed and let's see what was I going to do next I've been doing laundry in between each segment here so I'm trying to remember what, what I finished up on oh the other tag here so I wanted to show you this um, you kind of saw me working on this one or assembling it anyway um, in the last clip which is the process portion so I have the first one that I complete a little um, I like to kind of call these like my little inspiration strips because they're just like strips of paper and you can just write down something inspirational. I'm all about positive affirmations being around me and everything. So you can do that. You can write a little note about what whatever it was you did that day, whatever. You can even just, you know, stitch on some additional different little fabric bits if you want to do that. So I just did a really super simple um, stitch again on there. And I wanted these to go kind of do, 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 like that so they kind of gave a little bit more interest I guess you could say and that's on the back side I don't like to cover them um, because I think they're kind of cool to look at the the stitches in the back side so and I'll probably trim this down a little bit more the ends but there's that one so just really super simple quick and easy and I'm gonna put this one in the front um, little pocket because the one I'm gonna do with you guys right now it's gonna be a little bit taller I believe so I've already got my needle ready to go Went ahead and inked everything. Um, did I re-ink this one? I can't tell. 
link this real super quick. So I'm using, I changed out a couple of the fabric elements from the last clip here and I wanted to use this little bit of this um, lace netting that I have. I just like the way it looks. It's a little more tattery. And I took my, um, I almost said my toothbrush, <laughs> tweezers, and kind of distressed a little bit more. So, all right. So the composition for this one is going to be roughly this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tack down with a little bit of this glue stick on the elements so they kind of stay in the position I want them to until I get to sit uh, stitching them. In the spot where I want them to go. Okay, let me zoom in just a little bit more. I'm a, I, I always worry about getting in too close, and all you can see is just my hands doing this. So, sorry if I'm keep going in and out. All right, so the composition I'm thinking for this one is I really like this layaway tag, and um, I like for this to be on. Oops, I forgot to distress this real quick. Let me do it really, really quickly. So let's get this in here. Just kind of give this a real quick like that. And then I don't need to do it on the side, the other side, because you're not going to be able to see it. Okay, let me pull that off. I like that little bit of a string hanging on. We'll take a look at it once I get it together. I might trim it down. So I'm going to put this over here in the upper left. But I don't want it to be too high to where you can't see this kind of hanging out in the bottom. So I, I just, I really like how that looks. So I'm just going to do this like that. Okay, and then this little bit of trim or lace, whatever you want to call it. I thought it was kind of just like maybe bunch it up and then just like stitch it on there. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm probably going to be able to end this particular uh, video because I have different um, projects in mind for some more of the different tea things I'm working on and um, slow stitching. So see here it's really hard because i usually have my face like right over top of this so i can make sure i mean it's not it doesn't have to be perfect like you know it's not critical to that so all right i don't need to glue that because i can just hold that piece there but i want to hmm i don't want to do this part maybe i will because i have a little bit of green on this one maybe what i'll do do i have an end on here let me make a knot real quick okay so let's use this little bit and then what i'm thinking is to kind of have it bunched up like, you know, like that kind of, of a thing. I know it's hard to see, something like that. And then that'll what I'll do is once I get this stitched like I want it to be in that position, then I'll just take this, lay it down, and stitch it all together. It's kind of my little plan here. So we shall see how it's going to work out, because you never know. Oh, I like, like that with three. Okay, let's see if it'll look like that when I'm done. So I'm going to come up through the middle here. If I can, ooh, if I can get it into the... There we go. So just real super simple, kind of wonky stitching. I like wonky stuff, so makes it kind of interesting to look at. I'll come back up here. I know it's probably hard to see with my fingers being right in the way, but it's about the best I can do. Okay, so let's do let's do one more down and we can end it, and then I will take this and stitch it onto that little um, collage bit there. So I'm going to, let's see, yeah, I like how that looks. I think that's kind of cool. And I know it's going to be hard for you guys to see this. Um, if I zoom in anymore, I'm afraid you, all you're going to see are my fingernails. So that's not very exciting to see. So hold it up. You're going to see that part. Yep. I like that. And then we'll just stitch this baby on the back side, just like that. So, and I'm using the same kind of cream color again. Okay, I like how that looks. Isn't that cool? It's kind of all clustered in there together, kind of like a little collagey mess. Not a mess, but a beautiful mess there. And then I think what I want to do is let's go from the left to the right. I'm going to turn this upside down so I can actually see it better to do this. And I just kind of want to do just a quick stitch across the bottom of this tag. I think that's probably going to be it. We'll take a look and see when I get done how I like it. So kind of do one more loopy do. And then maybe what I'll do is come on the other side and do uh, just like some smaller seed stitches or something. All right, so let me just tie this off on the back side real quick. Sorry, I'm taking it out of frame so I can see what I'm doing. I like how that looks. I think it looks kind of cool, yeah? Kind of go off the side a little bit of detail. I, think I might actually leave it like it is. Maybe I'll do a couple small seed stitches on this side here, and then I think I'll be good. 
and I'm going to decorate this couple of little pieces of paper to use in the middle here for the tuck spot. And what I'll do is I'll put both of them in here since I don't have this adhered to any journal page yet. So that's kind of how that's going to be. But I like how this looks. Still attached, of course, but I just wanted to show you how it looks when it's tucked into this back pocket here. I think it looks kind of cool, yeah? You can see it sticking up over the top as well as this one right here. You can see the little... Um, pinking edge on that one. I love it. I think it's really cute. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a couple uh, sm more um, scraps of coffee dye paper. Just do some more random stitching and then just kind of stick them both in here. And then I'll come back on and I will show you the ones I made prior to this video and kind of wrap this one up. So I'll be right back. Um, the other video you're going to see this in is going to be um, slow stitched tabs or not tabs, slow stitching tabs. I think I might call it that. I don't know. We'll see. And um, I know this is not right to do it that way, but it works for me. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to incorporate my um, current obsession with slow stitching by uh, incorporating it into some different journal applications. And it doesn't even have to be journal. I mean, it could be um, for planners. It could be for um, a scrapbook page or a mini album or even... Um, like, uh, you can even do it in cards. I mean, I've had different tags and whatnot in cards and stuff before. So, just part off, and I will see you in the next clip. Yeah, so guess what this girl did? I completely forgot about turning the camera back on. See, I can't stress enough that in between each of the segments, like little clips that I put together, um, there could be hours in between. There could there has been um, times where there's been days in between. So I completely forgot that in, in the last clip because I don't like rewatch the last part I filmed. I just kind of go off of what I remember, which is probably not a good idea since um, I seem to forget a lot of things. Um, but anyway, so I was going to come back on after I finished this one that I showed in the last clip. That I remember because I had this laid out still because I, I mean it's probably been three out four hours three to four hours I've been doing laundry and all of the kinds of stuff so anyway so there's this one I'll pull it out when I'm done I don't want to lose my spot and then what I did is instead of using more of the same coffee dyed paper I wanted to use some of the coffee dyed layaway tags that I have so I went ahead and I just did some fun little you know basic little seed stitching on here with some of this fabric that um, is a scrap of the cover and I'm just using that same um, okay so I just did that and I left it because I, I like the strings being long but I, I like that you can see this and from what I'm learning from the whole slow stitching community and slow stitching movement that um, having the stitches be exposed is very desirable so that's why I've left them I mean not on this because I glued it to the back of this one but some other items that I've made let me grab it here this will be a good example um, the back side of that because I thought oh, I'll probably cover that up but then it, the person that's going to be getting this um, you know, they can ad ad uh, use adhesive to put it on their project that they want to. They can back with fabric and make another little pocket. I mean, I don't know, all kinds of opportunities. But what I have here, and I have a little tab on this one, with all that being said. Anyway, so I just cut those out, little postage stamp ones, and I love that when it comes in two different sizes. You get two dies in one package. Let me clarify. Uh, clarify that so I like how, where it's going to be right there so again I'm um, just going to do a really super quick um, stitching on this all right so here's the last one and we'll let's pretend for a second let me grab this here pretend this is our journal okay and this is one of the pages in the middle the signature or whatever and then you have this and then you can use some um, I personally would use some score tape along right here sorry I'm out of frame right down here you use whatever adhesive you want or, you know, whatever works for you. It's a very personal thing, of course. Um, I would just do the score tape down here and here, and I would put this like that, okay? And that's going to give me um, a, a, the second tuck spot because this part of the, um, excuse me, this part of the tea bag thing is not glued down, that part. So that can be a tuck spot there, okay? And then you have the tuck spot in the, in the middle, because this is uh, two tea bags with the left side sewn up. And then you have the two pockets where um, this comes out, okay, for one of the pockets. And then this is the other one. So it's like four different slots that you can put different things in that you want to do. So that's why um, I made this extra one because I was going to kind of call it that. But you definitely 
don't have to do that, of course, if you end up make doing this project for yourself or whatever, you can stick both of them just in the middle, just depending on the size of tea bags you use too. So wrap up this video. So I'll see you in this little bit. Okay, so this is going to be the final clip of my slow stitch tea bag tuck spot um, tutorial sample video for you, all of you. So as I mentioned before, you're going to see a couple of the clips in this video in a couple other videos because I was working on a bunch of different um, tea bag projects at kind of um, at, uh, many, many projects at the same time. So, so I'll go ahead and kind of show you these up close again. So this is the combo pocket and tuck spot. And you can see just all the different stitching and watching me um, assemble kind of doing the colorway for this and the stitching on the side. And then here are the last two things I shared with you. So I, so I, I, like from the last clip, I talked about, you know, pretending this was the journal page. So this is like a double pocket, double tuck spot. So you could put something there and then something in the middle where the two tea bags are um, stitched together. And then you also have the little tags that I stuck in these little pockets that I made. So you can definitely, customize this to your own size and um, aesthetic and if you want to have multiple tags or uh, you know more more tuck things inside the middle versus the back side that's fine totally up to you how you want to um, interpret this in your own crafting and then this one here is the I guess standard size tea bag um, tuck spot so you could just adhere this put adhesive on this side and then stick it into your journal page or wherever you want to use this and then you have um, not, not one but two tuck spots one here in the, the middle of the tea bag and as um, one on the back side as well and something that I thought I thought it'd be kind of fun to do with this is this is the tea bag the tag that came with this particular one so what I did is I took some coordinating fabric from the little um, tag that I made here and I just uh, cut it out around the um, dimensions of the tea bag tag and this is what I'm talking about and just made this a little bit larger so I could do some slow stitching around the edge of that. And then, so the tea bag tag is actually inside here, so it gives a little bit of stability. And I just took some of my coffee dyed paper scraps and made like a little tiny journal thing here. So this could be used to, um, you know, anything. You could put like little, maybe little um, small samples of uh, some fabric that you liked, or maybe you went to, uh, I don't know, some kind of like a bridal shower or whatever and you have like a little bit of the napkin you could actually write in here if you wanted to not this girl because I write way too big um, just all kinds of different things you can do in here if you want to do that or you can leave a blank just that'd be kind of another um, you know different way to um, alter and use the uh, tags that come with the tea bags and then this is a button that is not vintage I'm pretty sure I filmed this clip and um, I, d I took this off I decided because I was thinking that um, this could be you know just wrapped around the tea bag and or stitched back on if you want to but i thought this would be, this would be kind of a fun um, little quirky bookmark so to speak on something like this hanging over the spine so if you have any questions for me about any of the um, steps i did on altering these or if you've already done this yourself i'd love to know what you did and please feel free to share your social media information so I can go and check out your work as well and be inspired by you and support you as all of you always support me. So happy scrapping, happy planning, happy crafting, and happy tea bag altering. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.